Hello, Mark Kalababa here, President and CEO of Adamera Minerals Corp. Recently, I put a video out documenting various data sets that we have received for the Buckhorn 2.0 Gold Project in Washington State. We have developed about 40 strong targets from that, 20 of which require immediate drill testing. In this video, I'm going to show you five of those targets that have some previous drilling, and just to give you an idea of how we're dealing with that data. This map shows our various projects, and you can see Buckhorn tucked right up against the Canadian-US border. It's about 80 kilometers by road to Kinross's Kettle River Mill, which is currently under care and maintenance. This is a good sized project. It's 36 square kilometers. It's 100% owned by Adamera, and it surrounds the past producing Buckhorn Mine. The Buckhorn Mine was originally discovered by Crown in late 1980s. It was mined by Kinross between 2008 and 2017. It produced 1.3 million ounces of gold, at an average rate of about 13 grams per ton. This was a very rich mine. Now mines like this, in my mind, don't occur as single occurrences. I believe they occur in clusters or multiple occurrences. So our task now is to find more of these mines and we've got a data set to do that. We have numerous data sets that we can use for developing drill targets. In this video, I'm going to show you five targets that were developed using EM. And these targets, they've been drilled historically. And I'm going to go through some of that, just show you the importance of modeling the data. And this is the kind of modeling we do with all of our targets. Before moving on, let's talk about what we like about VTEM EM as a targeting tool. Now, what you're measuring with EM is conductivity massive sulfide and semi-massive sulfide bodies tend to show strong conductivity. The Buckhorn mine had a lot of sulfides, both massive and semi-massive, and it was a very good conductor. So anything we see on this property that is a good conductor, and especially if it has gold in soils, these are very good targets for us. This map shows the distribution of targets that we've developed. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the targets or some of the targets shown in blue. Let's look at the VTEM data. Here's VTEM4. We've modeled this. When we model this type of data, the software typically places a rectangular body that best fits the conductivity of that feature. Now, in this case, we have a body or a modeled plate in this location. Now, let's look at some of the previous drilling. Here's a vertical hole. Didn't hit the target. Here's another hole. This is angled. Now, this looks like it might hit. But when we look at the trace of that drill hole, wow, that just missed it. What we want to do is put a collar here and drill across the plate to see if there's any mineralization causing that conductor. Keep in mind that much of the historic drilling was completed decades before the VTEM survey was flown. And perhaps some of the targeting, the early targeting, was less sophisticated with the lack of good modeling software. Here's VTEM7. This is a pretty good sized target. We've got a model plate that runs like that. Let's look at the previous drilling. Vertical holes, three of them. One gets pretty close to the target, but still on the very edge. What would we want to do with that? Put a couple of collars in and drill across the target. Again, to see if there's any mineralization causing that conductor. VTEM17. Here's the plate. Quite a few drill holes. Not sure what they were targeting. I like this one. It's an angled hole. It misses the plate. Now, what would we do with that? Here's our collar. We drill across the anomaly. VTEM 14. Here's the plate. Previous drilling. One more hole. That's an angled hole. Does it go across the target? No, it goes in the complete opposite direction again. Now, what do we want to do? Put a collar in, drill across the plate. Now, sometimes when we look at this data, we find surprises. Looking at the previous drilling here, here are some really nice little surprises. 8.2 grams per ton over 1.2 meters of drilling, 2.1, and 4 grams per ton gold. So that is a separate target, and we'll model that using our magnetics. Let's carry on looking at the EM. Leave the best to last. VTEM15, I really like this target. Here's the plate. Previous drill hole colors. Some of those holes are angled. Here's another collar that was put in. That hole just misses the target. This one grazes the edge of the plate. 
And in fact, that hole has some lower grade intercepts of gold on either side of that plate. Where would we drill it? Here we put a collar in and drill across the plate. Now, as I mentioned in the last slide, sometimes we find some surprises. Well, here's some beautiful surprises. 17.2 grams per ton gold over 1.2 meters and 2.2 and 3.3 grams per ton over 1.2 and 1.3 respectively. Now, those are, again, various targets that we will have to look at with the magnetics. These are not that far from that target, but it certainly tells you that this is a good area. There's gold in the area. And 17.2 grams per ton, that hole does not look followed up, and that's something that we're going to work on. With 30 years of data collected, we put a value on that of about $15 million, and I really do believe this is going to advance our efforts by at least six years. We're not having to spend time looking or building targets or building data sets that we can use for targeting. That is done. Our focus now is on permitting and drilling and making the discovery of the next mine in this area. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and do stay tuned. I'm going to keep putting these out. I'm going to start to break down individual targets a little bit more closely. I think the next one I will do will likely be Keystone and that is a really interesting target and I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much.